Welcome to another presentation about the origin of the Carolina Bays. This episode discusses the interaction of wind, water, and impacts during the creation of the Carolina Bays. Many geologists consider that the Carolina Bays evolved over thousands of years, but if the bays originated from secondary impacts of glacier ice ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide Ice Sheet, then the features of the landscape could have been created in just a few minutes. This LiDAR image shows a very clear demarcation between the relatively flat terrain of the Atlantic Coastal Plain and the hilly terrain of the Piedmont. Govan, South Carolina is located close to this geographic transition point. A closer look at this transition zone reveals a landscape with many deformed Carolina bays and windblown sand sheets. The topography in this image is represented by a color spectrum that repeats for every 10 meters of elevation and makes it easy to identify the flat centers of the bays. Philip Prince, who has the YouTube channel The Geo Models, made a video about some features that most Carolina Bay researchers won't show you, to make a point that wind has significantly influenced the landscape where the Carolina Bays are found. Devin's Jordan brought this video to my attention. The video compares some Carolina Bays and other lakes in different parts of the world to demonstrate the sand sheets that are formed downwind from these features. Philip says that the pointy sand sheets on the river banks are often called splash chevrons and they are attributed to impacts in the river, but the problem is that these landforms point in the same direction on both sides of the river valley. A splash event would splash in opposite directions and that is not what you see here. The expectation that an impact would splash in opposite directions is correct if there is no wind. However, if the impacts that made the Carolina Bays were contemporaneous with the strong winds that made the sand sheets, then the ejecta from the impacts would have been blown only downwind. Philip looks in detail at the bays and the dunes or sand sheets and concludes that the bays interacted with the dunes. Philip discusses a sequence where the bay had to form first, then the sand sheet formed, and finally another bay overlaid the sand sheet. But he says, quote, when you got the sand dune complexes that are coming off the bays themselves, and then you got other bays messing with those, it is very good evidence that the formation of these features was a progressive thing. It was a reflection of climatic and landscape conditions and not a single catastrophic type of event. End quote. Philip tries to correlate the direction of the sand sheets and the orientation of the bays. He says, quote, in the Lumber River Valley, North Carolina, the dune sheet orientation has changed again as the bay orientation. So if you take lines from those dune sheets and compare them to those bay axes, they are variable. They are geographically variable, but if you were to cruise all around the Lynch's River Valley, you would see dune sheets lined up like this and you would see bay orientations like that. So because bay orientation changes with dune orientation and the dune orientation is a product of wind direction, one might assume that there is some kind of connection there." End quote. If the wind had something to do with forming the shape of the bays, this brings up the question. What was the exact mechanism that created mathematically elliptical basins? In his conclusion, Philip says, don't get distracted by those real beautiful elliptical bays, but for me, it is impossible to ignore them. I want to know the physical mechanism that produces mathematically elliptical bays of different sizes. In 1977, Raymond Kocharovsky conducted an experiment with a fan blowing over a model lake carved on a sand table. He was not able to produce any elliptical structures. The wind can produce sand sheets, but there is no evidence that wind can produce mathematically elliptical basins that can overlap while maintaining their geometry. In the LiDAR images, we can see that there are sand sheets over the bays and that there are bays over the sand sheets. From the geological law of superposition, this is a clear indication that the formation of the sand sheets by strong winds and the formation of the Carolina Bays were contemporaneous events. The only thing that is not evidence is the time at which these geological events happened and the duration of the events. Philip describes the uniformitarian process that forms the sand sheets in the Falkland Islands, and we can see that this process can take many years. According to the UK Overseas Territories Conservation Forum, the oceanic climate of the Falkland Islands is dominated by westerly winds as the islands sit on the roaring forest belt of the southern Atlantic. The average wind speed through the capital of Stanley is 31 km per hour, but gales are frequent with winds reaching up to 95 km per hour. It is easy to conclude that the extensive sand sheets and dunes associated with the Carolina Bays could have taken a long time to form, but would it surprise you to know that all this geological activity could have happened in less than 10 minutes? It is difficult to appreciate the speed at which geological changes can take place under catastrophic conditions. 
For many years, Harlan Brest tried to convince the geological community that the scablands of the Pacific Northwest were created by an unprecedented flooding event that left giant ripples and enormous erratic boulders on the landscape. Eventually, his ideas were accepted, but it took a lot of effort. Five years ago, in February of 2019, I made a video exploring the atmospheric effects of the Younger Dryas impact, which assumes that a comet impacted the Laurentide ice sheet and ejected pieces of glacier ice in ballistic trajectories. The main concept of that presentation was that an expanding ejecta curtain would trap the polar jet stream and bring it to ground level during the ballistic sedimentation of the ice boulders whose impacts created the Carolina Bays. The jet stream is typically about 9 kilometers above the surface of the Earth and it blows from west to east. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the wind of the jet stream can reach speeds of more than 442 kilometers per hour. The wind of the jet stream moves almost twice as fast as the wind of a Category 5 hurricane that can cause catastrophic damage to most buildings. If the jet stream was brought down to the surface during the ballistic sedimentation that produced the Carolina Bays, there is no question that sand sheets, dunes, and splash chevrons would be oriented pointing downwind toward the east. Kelly Bay in South Carolina provides evidence of the climatic conditions that existed during the creation of the Carolina Bays. A nice projectile produced Kelly Bay near the Little P.D. River. Some impacts on the river splashed sediment that was blown on top of Kelly Bay by the hurricane force winds of the jet stream of 400 km per hour that had been brought to ground level. Some small ice projectiles then impacted the sand sheets. All this happened within a few minutes, not hundreds or thousands of years. In a video released in March 2022, I calculated that Big Bay and the sand sheet that covered its margin could have formed in 3 minutes. This is derived from the flight times calculated with ballistic equations using the angles of impact implied by the width to length ratios of the base. An extraterrestrial impact on the ice sheet by the Great Lakes would have launched ice boulders with flight times of 7 to 9 minutes. The landscape was modified by the hurricane force winds and the high energy impacts during a very short time interval. The impacts in some areas of South Carolina had energy equivalent to 8 megatons of TNT per square kilometer. Impacts on the watery riverbed made waves that dredged old sediment along the bank and deposited it on the edge of Big Bay. 94 seconds after Big Bay was formed, a small impact made the bay on top of the sand sheet. A paper by Brooks et al. found that the sand sheet on the rim of Big Bay has an age of 74.3 thousand years. That is what you would expect by dredging old sediment from the bank of the river and depositing on the edge of the bay. This is not related to the date of bay creation. If you build a stone house using old stones, you cannot determine the age of the house by dating the stones. In my analysis of the Carolina Bays, I have always been interested in trying to figure out their mechanism of formation. I made a video about the formed bays in February 2022. The guitar pick shapes of these bays by the Savannah River were a great mystery. I eventually figured out that the bays are on inclined terrain and only their uphill side was deformed. I determined that an impact cavity on inclined terrain has a steeper slope on the uphill side and it will cause viscous flow into the cavity. I was able to conduct an experiment that provides confirmation that this deformation mechanism is plausible. The uphill side of the cavity has a steeper angle than the overall terrain and material flows into the cavity and deforms the uphill side. It is not a good idea to disregard the elliptical geometry of the Carolina base because this is the best clue that we have about their origin. Without the confirmation that the Carolina Bays are mathematically elliptical, as can be shown by fitting them with ellipses by the least squares method, we would just wave our hands in ignorance to say that the bays were created by wind and water mechanisms even though there is no theoretical or experimental verification. Fortunately, now we have a mathematical foundation for calculating the characteristics of the impact basins and the extraterrestrial impact. The conic sections representing the Carolina Bays and the convergence point by the Great Lakes provide the initial conditions for developing a physics-based model. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. The Carolina Bays should not be neglected. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic Coastal Plain. There is a link to the LiDAR visualization tool in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.